Sorry. Hey, baby, what you doing? Well, I'm fixing to make some rabbit stew. That's good. I'll try some of that. Yeah, well, Daddy, I would be doing, you would be doing this rabbit if it wasn't for the fact that my dad says he'll try it now. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to make just a normal rabbit stew. No, I mean, my dad doesn't like mushrooms, you know. So nothing with mushrooms, darn. I love mushrooms. They don't, you know, digest well, but they're good. Um, What's so that? What is that? That is my bone broth. That's your bone broth? Yeah, I just strained it out. Look at all this stuff. And I'm waiting on There's more goodness pot. to drip out of my, out of my colander there. Yep. Right, pardon me. It's the bone, bo bone broth leftovers. Yeah. Oh, but I am going to put a rutabaga in this because I have rutabaga. And Daddy does like rutabaga and carrot. I do have parsnips, but Daddy's not too crazy about parsnips. So the only weird thing is going to be a rutabaga, if you consider. No, I like rutabagas. Rut in, in but I'm only going to do one. In the way so. of vegetables, rutabagas have like, a, what, a quarter probably of your daily nutritional oh, yeah, value? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of the reasons They're I like super to nutritious. eat them. But I have to, one of the things that I really like to eat, and it's when I lived in England, and the first time I ate it, I thought I was eating like carrots and and like I don't know sweet potatoes mashed up. But they um, call a rutabaga a swede, and it was carrot and swede mashed up, and it's one of my favorite things. And I hadn't made it in a while. Yeah, it's good. But Dad likes that too. So this having carrots and swede rutabaga, yeah, he he should be cool with that variation on your average potatoes, carrots, and celery stew. Mm. Yeah. But the rabbit's over there on the stove soaking in salt water. It's been soaking since last night about this time. So it's really? been in there about 24 hours. Just our usual pink Himalayan salt water. You know, that's two rabbit legs and actually four loins if you consider one yeah. side each loin. So it's loin and legs. Is loin and is. legs. Loin and legs. And once again, cooking puppy chicken, it's about to be. I always cook a lot at once. And then I don't cook all week. What's this? <laughs> that is my flour, salt, and pepper that I'm going to um, dredge the rabbit meat in and then I'm going to sear it in my pan over here in all, with olive oil. Okay. And then just sear it. You're just like searing in the juices and then it goes straight in the crock pot. And then I'm going to let it cook off the bone and then, you know, pull what, you know, it'll fall off the bone by tomorrow morning because it's like 6.30, you know, East Coast, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, November 10th, 2018. What you cutting on now? Okay, this is the on the bone loin. All right, so you're just taking the skin off. And I'm taking the skin off. Now, now we're ready. 
That's what I was cutting the legs off of with your knife last night. This is your secret batter. Well, it's not a batter, it's a dredge. A dredge. And, and what's the difference between a batter and a dredge? A batter is wet, a dredge is dry. Okay. And I just put the little back down first and let it fry. And then I get a, a dry paper towel. You take the second leg out. Put the other one leg and one loin is in the crock pot currently. So how much does one rabbit cook for one silver fox? What do you mean? He does a pretty decent, like, what size crock pot is that? That's an eight quart crock pot. Eight quart crock pot. So one rabbit will do, yeah. fill that up pretty good, yeah, huh? Yeah, if, if we were doing a whole rabbit, I can get a whole rabbit in that crock pot. You want to get your flour a little bit brown, because the cooking of that flour is what kind of thickens your gravy. And if the gravy doesn't thicken, you can make a roux. Or you can do this really cool trick with butter and flour that you that you uh, mix together. That's what you want. I mean, be golden like that. Cook that flour. And you want to brown it on all sides. You're just basically searing it because you're not cooking it through. You're just sealing in the juices. Whoops, whoops, I dropped it, I dropped it, folks. There we go. All sobs. So what did we cook last time we did rabbit? Uh, that's when I did the... Tomato rabbit, right? No, that's when I did the ra all four rabbit legs, and I did oh, it with, yeah. the, with the mushrooms, yeah, remember? Yeah, I, I yeah. did the mushroom. Well, I think every time we do this, it comes out excellent. I'm not complaining. I'm not had any complaints myself. So what? Um, what kind of herbs do you have lined up for this one? Basil, um, bay leaf, basil, bay leaf, and I'm torn between tarragon or thyme. I mean, not both. One or the other. All right. I'm gonna dangerously carry this loin over this plate. <laughs> I think the crock pot is pretty essential in doing these rabbits because they just cook better in a slow, moist environment. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, I'm just a huge fan of the crock pot because I'm sick a lot, folks. And when I'm sick and I don't feel good, rabbit is not one of those things I would cook because it takes, I like to do all these things with it. But um, throw a whole chicken in it and make chicken soup. You know, throw in a whole roast and put some bone broth in it. That's all I gotta do, you know, and if I've got potatoes, wash them, cut them in half, and throw them in. Let's check that thing out. And there's our rabbit backs, loins, whatever you want to call them. And you put your broth in. That's our homemade bone broth. If you watch Collard Green, Beans and Greens vlog, that is the bone broth that was cooking when you were walking, that was over there cooking. I'm a firm believer in the bone broth. It makes our chicken, I mean, I can't wait till we raise our own chickens. That's the rest of the bone broth that's drained off of the <laughs> I should have probably strained it before I poured it. But Look at that. Know. Oh, it smells good already. Of course it does. All right, put the lid on, please. Okay, lid's See, going on. the chicken. Chris, you washed all those dishes and I just created a bunch more. Yeah, this kitchen looks great. Enoch, Enoch did a good job, didn't Enoch, he? Enoch, Enoch cleaned the kitchen. Enoch! Enoch, come! Where you at, buddy? Jump! So Enoch. he says, Jump! Enoch. Best wishes, do the dishes. Alright, Enoch, jump, jump. So when? Good boy! Tell him a story about... Okay, when I leave, I've got these little rhymes that I say to the dogs, and it's something I've said since I was in high school, I used to say to like my family, best wishes, do some dishes, you know, be good, cut the wood, because we burned wood. 
And so I say it to my puppies after I create them and I leave, I always go, be good, cut the wood, best wishes, do the dishes, I'll be back, black pack, don't do crack. <laughs> so that's what I say, and so I come home from the grocery store today, and Enoch did the dishes, didn't he do the dishes, buddy? Did you clean the kitchen for your mama? Oh, he's such a sweet puppy. He has been squirrel hunting. I gotta remember to try to get that on video. He took off into the backyard looking for that squirrel that's yeah, been on our porch. Yeah, you wanted that squirrel. I'm getting tired. Hey, I didn't know you were filming. I gotta get used to hearing that noise. <laughs> so you chopping up some garlic, huh? Yep, three cloves of garlic. I threw in a few taters. We'll probably yeah. need more taters, but I just want a good old filming in. You we know? got taters, carrots, bro broccoli. Where'd that come from? Mm -hmm. We got taters, carrots, onion, and rabbit so far. And we're going to have garlic as soon as I'm happy. We still got celery to go. Celery and uh, rutabaga. And a rutabaga. So we may not meet mead. We may not meet all those potatoes, Chris. Mead. Mm, maybe, maybe I not. Like mead. <laughs> All right, what are you doing over here? I am getting fresh thyme to add to our rutabaga rabbit. Rutabaga rabbit. Rutabaga rabbit stew. Uh, let's check it out. See, so threw in a rutabaga on the top. We got few potatoes in there and some celery bone broth and rabbit and carrots and potatoes and onion and garlic yes that's what it's a wax squee rabbits yes a teaspoon of salt breaking out the Himalayan salt always that's all I use put it in here with my time time after time Time after time. <laughs> time after time. I feel like I crud my corners. Cruddy corners aren't good. Alright, cool. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of pepper. About a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm not peppering myself out. So how long are these things going to cook for? Throughout the night Overnight. and into the morning? Overnight and whenever I finally get the last liquid added. So I guess 7.30 in the morning, I'll set an alarm and come. Oh, I could set a timer, mm. and it will turn itself off and go to warm. Mm. I forget about this new crock pot. I miss my old one, though. I liked it better. Yeah, well. And then I'm going to grind my herbs together. Well, my salt, pepper, and thyme. I'm going to add basil. And there's already bay leaf in there. I dropped it in back when before I started adding veg, so it's like in the bottom. And we still have to add water. I haven't added any water yet. Just got the crock pot on low, just letting it warm everything. I don't think anything's actually even hot in there yet. Yeah, it needs bacon. You think everything needs to have bacon? <laughs> I mean, I love bacon, but this doesn't... I mean, there is a mini a recipe I have for that, but this is for Daddy. So once again, we gotta stay on focus within on. normal, average people limits. Instead of crazy homesteader, we eat a lot of things normal people don't eat, <laughs> or maybe they aren't normal. I don't know. Living in England's what really changed a lot of the things I eat. Oh, All right, season it up. Gonna sprinkle this in here. Sprinkle. Rake it out. Rake it out. Okay. Yes, I make up songs. All right. Now, just for like good measure, mm, we're smells gonna good. take a couple of. Everybody goes, we need twine to tie our herbs together. I just use a stem. Now I'm just going to put a couple more sprigs just to infuse it more. I'll just tie a little knot. It worked last time. And I put more in it last time because it was more for us. And I don't want to... Uh-oh, we got to be careful when you tie that knot. I broke it. 
I broke it, folks. I broke it. I wouldn't worry about it. That much, I would just lay it on the top and not even worry about it. Gentle. Gentle. We can fish it out. It ain't no Look, thing. I did it. I did it. Good job, honey. I did it. Okay, so I'm just going to lay that on top. Our last herb is basil. Basil, thyme, salt, pepper, bay leaf. Cool. I need to grow some of this because I didn't plant that. Well, we need to expand the herb garden. Yeah. I mean, right. you know. And, and as far as how much basil I put in this, I don't know. I chop it up till it looks right. Probably a teaspoon, uh, not a teaspoon, probably a tablespoon. Oh no. Probably gonna use this whole thing. Do it. Let's get rid of this. The Italian part. seasoning, you can't go wrong. Need some cheese on it. Mm. That basil. Make a cheese, cheese, basil, and tomato sandwich. Oh lord, yeah. <laughs> Be like the best Ogden grilled cheese. Oh man, then we could. Then we can throw it into a grilled yeah. cheese form and butter it up. Mm. We're not like normal people. We need the calories. Yeah, we're painfully skinny people. That's why I wish I wish they would stop taking sugar free out of everything. I'm suffering over here. Uh, we can't find our calories. <laughs> Calling that chop. 